name's Leslie Norman Hubble, and I like to do art. Most of my scholastic background is in um, English literature and creative writing. Um, however, I've always done visual arts, was very much into it in high school, and took classes in college and then postgraduate work at the uh, classes at the Art Institute. It all began with my mother. She, uh, when my brother and I were very, very young, she insisted that we sit down and do handwork. But I think we were pretty hyper and kind of hard to control, but she'd put on some, uh, oh, classical music or musicals or children's stories being read by someone on the record player, and then she would have spread out on this big table a newspaper and all kinds of eye candy type material, uh, paints, crayons, a uh, Play-Doh that she actually made herself. She also, one of the very most influential things was that she was always saying things like, oh, look how the sunlight is reflecting off that uh, that clock, this crystal clock that they had, and see the shapes it's making on the walls. And so I just kind of naturally grew up looking at that stuff. Well, right now I do a lot of collage and assemblage. Um, I draw a lot and do some painting. Um, work a lot with molding pastes, various acrylic mediums, and mixed media, basically. And uh, a, another big, big thing that I do right now is uh, take photographs and then manipulate them on the computer and or draw and paint on the computer and mix and match these photos and do incorporate them with drawings and scan and put some things all together that way. So. What drives me a lot, I, I was going to say hunger, and that's almost a cliche, you know, I have the urge to do what I have to do it, but I guess cliches get that way for a reason, and there is a lot of truth to that. Um, having had mental illness my whole life, um, depression, se severe anxiety, bipolar, whatever, um, I find that I just automatically reach for my drawing pad. Um, it's just my, and I'm so fortunate to actually have a studio in, in my apartment now. It's just like a combination candy store, psychotherapist's couch, spiritual resort. Um, I just love to to go in there and if I'm anxious, it doesn't really matter what it looks like. And it does very, really help. I've, I've found it's a very effective treatment for, for those disorders or personality, um, whatever we want to call them, traits. My husband died uh, about three years ago, and I was just, uh, after a long illness, he had COPD, and I took care of him in our house, and um, it was a very, of course, a very difficult time. I was also very privileged. I was very blessed to have been able to take care of him, and we got, we became uh, much closer even than than we were before. But, you know, I saw it was very disturbing what happened to him. And um, to watch him growing smaller, to watch him not be able to breathe. Um, and I, I have done a lot of lung pieces. I looked up um, end-stage lung disease and other words that the nurses and doctors were, would use. Core pulmonale, that was a, one that I was intrigued by that word. And uh, it apparently is something that happens toward the end. The images that I looked up on, on the internet and in various books were very ugly. 
disgusting. The colors were horrible. And um, the fact that he couldn't breathe was, was very disturbing. So I just, I don't know, I found that at first I was just flooded with words and wrote a lot of uh, just stream of consciousness uh, writing about that whole experience. And then, um, then I found myself after he, after he died, after when I was, you know, in that confused state, and, and frankly, I still am a lot of the time. You know, I feel like part of me has been uh, amputated or whatever. And um, I just find that, for example, using his one of his hospital bracelets in an assemblage that I did, um, a little bit of a playing card, he loved to play poker. Um, and then the lung images. And just constructing them into something that's more aesthetically pleasing. And it just makes me feel more peaceful. Might still be disturbing, but it makes me feel better. And I'm also motivated by uh, my own brain and body. Um, various, well you know, brain imaging. Um, I have, oh, I have several s severe spinal disorders, and so I'm really interested in x-rays, MRIs, and, you know, it's amazing how the spine can resemble so many other things and uh, represent so many other things. And I have a piece of cement in my back from a broken vertebra and that's I don't know that in one of the pieces I'm, I haven't started on yet but I'm going to use that kind of as a centerpiece um, but I do have one called sonogram girl where it's basically a little doll who has a sonogram as a blouse and a dress and um, x-ray woman is just basically different parts of x-ray machines from a doctor's office that I cut and pasted and painted over. I've always been obsessed with time and the, the just its elusiveness and the, the fact that we have, we're powerless over it and all the methods we go through to try to manage it and all of our, you know, modern technology and and I feel like tattooing a USB port on myself so that I can be ready, uh, metaphorically. And I do have a, a piece with a, uh, a doll head, and she has a USB port attached to her and some kind of broken USB cord. So it, um, it just fascinates me. Um, I must say that Having the Nelson Museum here and the Kemper um, just make Kansas City a really good place to live. I mean, to get to go and gaze at all that art free anytime we want. Um, I go to the sculpture garden and take walks or just sit there and it's, um, it's amazing. I guess, you know, making what I find disturbing or ugly, either physically, emotionally, intellectually, whatever. Um, if I can make it into something that's a little more aesthetically pleasing, um, I, I'm very rewarded when I can do that. Or when it just even distracts from it, um, maybe raises more questions about it, which is fine and good. But it's still changed, it's transformed. Maybe, you know, I could transform it into something humorous, and that, that would be also a good thing. And if any, you know, if there's anyone else who brings a, one minute of distraction or happiness or maybe thinking a different way about some of the things we were talking about, I find that rewarding as well. And just doing the work is its own reward.